The Brandon Peters Show may contain explicit language and detailed plot points. For more information on the show, stay tuned to the end of the episode. It's the summer of 93 at 30. All right, time to close another week here on The Brandon Peters Show with a song from our music video companion series to the summer of 93 at 30. And back with me. From earlier in the summer, we have from out now with Aaron and Abe. I'm back, yes. baby. Hello, yes, Abe is back. Doing a twofer here. Uh, <laughs> so we enter. Uh, hope your summer's been going good for you, Abe. It's been a while. So you know, we, we've got the summer gamble going on over at Out Now with Aaron and Abe. I uh, can't I'm believe Scott is winning for once. That's so I mean, wild. is he? No, he's probably not. <laughs> It's a wild out. summer. I'm excited for the the conclusion of it all, but I've been keeping track. I've been keeping tabs on my own. Yeah, I've, I'm scared. My number one is like feeling less number one. Well, I'm having second. Of, it's, it's weird. Like I was, I was pretty. I was like kind of cool, like cool, confident about it, and now I'm kind of uh-huh. like wait, because I, I had Indiana Jones. I yeah. you know at this time we know how Indiana Jones is doing. We're yes, recording this right. before yeah. it's released, but I picked it on this like you know what I think it's got that kind of Top Gun Maverick thing going right. for it with sprinkled with some Force Awakens stuff going for it. Yeah. We're good. And then I realize maybe it's got Terminator Dark Fate going for it. Well, no, nobody likes that. Because, but... you know, everybody's like, oh, well, Jamie Lee Curtis came back from Halloween. That was awesome. So Terminator's going to do it too with Linda Hamilton. And then, pfft. nope. So maybe nope. we're like, Tom Cruise going back to Maverick had it. And then, to, you know, Harrison, now I... We'll see. For every up, we'll there's see. a down, but who and knows? They, they put it out at con and it did not get the though, greatest. I'm not great. looking for the internet to like that movie. I need the right. general public to, and they yeah. don't count. They aren't paying attention to con exactly. film festivals. So. They're, they're watching things like past lives and things like that. Right, you know? of course, of course. Given, given palm d'ors and mm-hmm. you know, we're, we're looking for things like, you know, palm or d'oeuvres. I yes, don't know palm or d'oeuvres, yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so anyways, uh, Abe, the movies this week that we talked, this is one of my favorite episodes yes. that we did uh, of the show on um, this Monday because uh, I, I look forward to this. I just thought this was a fun lineup uh-huh. of movies. So we talked about King of the Hill, which was the uh, third film from Steven Soderbergh. Yeah. Have you seen I that would... one? No, I haven't, but right. I don't know why the first thing that comes to mind is not the is not the cartoon, but I don't know why Frankie Muniz is coming to my mind. Malcolm in the Middle? No, there mm. was maybe something that he did that was like children friendly that was probably called King of Something. Agent anyway. Cody Banks. Part uh, two. Part two, yeah. All <laughs> right. So then we did Manhattan Murder Mystery. Uh, haven't heard of it. Or I'm, <laughs> I've heard of it, but I haven't seen it. Gotcha. Funny movie. Um, And then Surf Ninjas. Oh my gosh. Hashtag Moto Surf. <laughs> this is the, the movie that made me want to get a Sega Game Gear. Right. All right. Okay. Because I was a Sega household. My brother got us a Sega for Christmas, and we were stoked. And uh, you know, little did I know that the Sega Game Gear took these giant batteries that just like you know it would eat up your batteries right. very quickly. Yeah. So, but it was awesome. Yeah. I had one. Um. But the, fun yeah. fact: it was supposed to be a Game Boy. It was in the script, and then Sega came in and funded some of the movie, oh. and then uh, they changed it to a Game Gear. There you go. Yeah. Right. There we are. And then the the main feature was Hard Target. Uh, Van Dam, Van Dam, and yeah. John Woo. John Woo's American debut. There you go. Okay, I haven't seen that one. Is oh. it good? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I like it, and a lot of people are like, "Oh, it got hacked up," and there's a, there's this like VHS quality director's cut uh-huh. going around. You're fine. The theatrical's good. Okay, like it delivers it. a good. It's got some style. And uh, Lance Henriksen and Arnold Vosloo are the bad guys. They're yes. pretty fun. Uh, Wolford Brimley is a Cajun guy. Uh, Does he yeah. wear a cowboy hat and have a big bushy mustache? Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes, he does. He rides a oh. horse. He does. There you go. All right. So um, classic, classic uh, shoehorn Wolford Brimley. Right. Uh, so I got to tell you, his uh, Van Damme's. I always one of my favorite things about Van Damme movies are like what what is his name in the movie? And like this is might be my favorite one. It's Chance Boudreau. I mean, it's got a French last name, so He's, really, they always French. Out. They always go French, Cajun, belt. Like they always try to. It's always funny. Like, you, and there's some scripts of his where you can tell, like, 
it was something else. Then they cast him, and they're like, okay, we can't call we this guy it. like Dirk Johnson. We can't do that. So it's got to be like <laughs> Remy Johnson or like Dirk Montaire or something like Off that. Off the top like, of your head, do you remember his name in Time Cap? No, I don't. I don't remember that's, either. That's one of my top five Van Damme movies, too. I mean, it's pretty great. It is the yeah. guy cop who goes back in time. I mean, to save it, like you know his wife from being murdered. Yeah, the it's uh, Ferris Bueller's girlfriend. Um, oh, Mia Sarah. Uh, yeah, Mia yeah. Sarah. Oh, didn't yeah, know that. Yeah. So his. his I mean, na- th- she's European in uh, Ferris Bueller's video app, so you know it makes sense that you know she marries Uncle Van Damme. So his name in that one is Walker. That's not very Frenchy, but I mean, maybe yeah. it's a mysterious name like Walker. I mean, yeah, Walker or like <laughs> Pierre Walker. There you go. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But oh, one of the funniest ones is like, uh, sudden death. They just didn't care. His name is Darren McCord. Sounds like the scriptwriters just like, no, whoever yeah. you cast is gonna be fine. Yeah, he looks yeah. Irish, right? No. Uh, okay. yeah. yeah. So, anyways, uh, brought you here today, Abe, <laughs> to talk about Dream Lover. Yes. Which is the uh, not just the title of the Peter Jackson script. For the for a never made sixth Nightmare on Elm Street movie, uh, it's the lead single off Mariah Carey's third album, Music Box. That yes. album also featured Hero, Without You, Never Forget You, and Anytime You Need a Friend. It was Carey's yes. seventh number one on the Billboard Hot 100, where it had a run of eight weeks. It topped the. It also topped the Dance Club songs, Mainstream Top 40, Rhythmic, Cash Box Top 100, whatever the hell that is, U.S. Urban. Uh, 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 U.S. Adult Contemporary, U.S. Adult Contemporary Hit Radio, and U.S. Urban Contemporary. The year end on the Hot 100, it finished eighth. The song, it, it was a, the album was a massive success. So I'm not sure I've ever, when doing the music video episodes in the history of this show, which is all, it's in September will be four years old. I don't think I've ever used this term for the sales before, but this album went diamond. Wow. Sold over 8 million copies in the United States, 28 million worldwide. Did most of its business in 94, though. So it comes out on August 31st mm-hmm. and was the 40th best album selling album of 1993, but the second best selling album of 94. Yes. Uh, okay. 87th uh, all time on the Billboard Top 200, 20, wow. 26th for the 90s, and 27th for the Billboard Top 200 women of all time out women albums of all time charts like this is it's insane this is like a pretty massive hit yeah diamond so it's not just platinum it's not Not, just platinum not not multi-platinum they're like no you went too many multis right you are diamond do you even know how many millions you have to get to to get to diamond is it past like five million it gets to diamond one million is platinum in the u.s platinum yeah because like in other countries you only have to like it's hundred thousand or something like that like well some countries it's like ten thousand i guess it probably is a population thing sure um but yeah so million in the u.s so is it 10 it can't be 10 million because if it's eight million in the u.s she only made eight million yeah and maybe it stops at five and once you get to like six it's you're at you're a diamond yeah, diamond. I times to get to diamond music <laughs> sales. Uh, songs have gone platinum ten times to become diamond. Well, oh. uh, yeah. well, yeah, you were right, but yeah. maybe they huh. changed it. The, maybe they changed the definition after 1984. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, that's crazy. Uh, uh, Who knows? so. Uh, this song samples "Blind Alley" by The Emotions. Mm-hmm. Uh, Abe, thoughts on Mariah Carey first? Got... Thoughts on Mariah Carey initially. Okay, so uh, you know, jumping off of what I talked about last time in '94, I'm in fourth grade. I'm mm-hmm. nine years old, uh, and I definitely remember this more of as like '94 song than a '93 song, mostly because I feel like I was more mature. So there's a yeah. fourth grade in for you. Yeah, Mariah I mean... Carey, known quantity in my household. Um, Mm -hmm. we've heard a lot of her music on the radio and, or we got those free, not free, but you know how they had like Sony or Columbia records. Like if you buy 10 of them for For a penny, exactly. Yeah. You know, that, that Uh, BMG and Columbia house. (laughs) Yep. I had those. Yeah, exactly. That's how we got our music, but, uh, known quantity. I've just known of her as this amazing recording artist. And obviously we're listening to top 40 as well with Casey Kasem and she's always like Mm -hmm. making these charts. 
I think this is like one of her like larger earlier hits, uh, if I'm correct. Yeah, this is uh, this is her transcending into a more hip hop style. Which right the the thing with Mariah Carey is she like moved and evolved and against the grain. Like she could have played safe, but she like went more to like kind of what she wanted to do or roots stuff. So she gets yeah. more of a um, hip hop. Like she, it keeps getting more hip because next the next album has I think the next album has Fantasy on it, which and- is a huge hit. And then Heartbreaker is the next one. So she keeps getting yeah. like big and then uh like does breakdown with Bone Slugs and Harmony, like all that yeah. stuff. Like she keeps uh getting more of it. So she was able to evolve with the times and just like right. make it cool and like probably pave the way for like collaborations with, you know, regular pop artists and these like rap artists that were right just now becoming mainstream. And so we're getting past I mean, we're right now in the thick of like the chronic. Yeah, where you wouldn't even she wouldn't even think of actually like Dr. Dre or Snoop to be on one of her records at this time, mm-hmm. uh, because this is where they're getting into the court with Tipper Gore and Two Live Crew and all that stuff. Tipper Gore, uh, yeah, but yeah. yeah, she does this. I mean, she first made her name being like, like I don't know, kids and parents liked her at the same time, right? Uh, yeah, and she's one of the family most, friendly. Yeah, we take her for granted now, like oh, ha ha, Christmas and all this, and like right. she's. She's had some mental health issues big time right. and, and yeah. all that, which, you know, that shouldn't be made fun of. And like, no, uh, but like, she's one of the most iconic artists out there. Like she shattered yeah. Beatles records, like, right. like insane. And like, I know, you know, Taylor Swift, by the time she's done, is probably gonna have these records, but that's like a lot of streaming and stuff. She's actually selling units, not just like right. somebody pays for a service and listened. Right. She pushed you like there was just recently, uh, you know, I'm, being you know dave matthews band's my favorite band they yeah. they recently they had a streak of seven straight number albums to debut at number one it's gone now their recent their album that came out a couple of weeks ago debuted at number five um but if you went to physical sales only yeah. they blew everything out of the water like they granted 37 thousand albums compared to what we used to do is right. like uh it's not great but they sold 37,000 albums the number one uh person who had the number one album by today's metrics only sold like i think it was like 1500 albums uh, like physical albums that's crazy and they, that's a but, huge steep drop but streaming they had a they factor in streaming not digital sales not right. uh, streaming has a factor into it and it was like they had it was like 128 to 41 so they okay. factor in streaming heavy but people aren't making the bands aren't making dollars the record companies aren't making good money off streaming anymore like, right yeah you, know, you constantly hear about that so yep. her records are stapled in like physical sales like fit like people buy right. a physical single of dream lover back yeah. then if they didn't want to buy the whole album or they bought the single and then That's bought right. the album like it's just crazy. Um, yeah. Or, or like, and much in her like 2000s is iTunes sales. So you're buying a digital file that you download. Right. So versus all the streaming. Yeah. I, I definitely agree with you. Let me say, take that back there. Um, so she's coming up in the 90s. Mm-hmm. And I, I think she probably is like huge by 94, 95, 96, 96 for sure. But I'm thinking of her as also like in that Whitney era too, right? Yeah, so oh, yeah, yeah, yep. She's, the, she's basically yep. like, you know, it's her and Whitney as like the two largest like female pop stars in the country. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, because and... we're we're done. We have shed Debbie Gibson, Tiffany, right. Cindy Lauper are all like they're out the door, and this is right. the next wave. And there's some there's some one hit wonders in here too, like. Uh, the girl like I like your smile, like do do do. They would only they wouldn't stick around, but there was got it. Some like them that hit highs, but didn't have the longevity. They stayed the stay, staying, staying power, power. Right. yeah. But yeah, yeah. They, they're coming off. Yeah, Whitney and her are the definitely the uh, let's uh, like the hangover medicine from the the teen <laughs> pop girls, which would repeat itself at the end of this decade with Britney Spears, Christina Aguilera. You know, all the instinct. Like we just got out of New Kids on the Block and all that. Yeah, and we'll get right back to it at the end of the next decade. So yeah, yeah you're right. Yeah. So she's there, and uh, they're, you know, always going. And I would also like in or not like, but I'd also throw in Celine Dion in into the mix right now yeah, too. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. So it's like these three like pop singers that are just selling out arenas all over the place, and 
moving massive number of unit records. Again, her staying power is so strong that, you know, come the 2000s, she is starting to collaborate more. But even today, like, you know, 2023, the cultural mm-hmm. zeitgeist knows who Mariah Carey is. Yep, you know? yeah, yeah. And that's that's staying power for you. And not in the not in the format of, well, you know, she had some hits back then. It's like, no, she's actually still doing stuff that makes her sort of, you know, pop up in news uh, aggregation sites and what have you. So, yeah, she has been a staple for quite a while. So my... my uh, my uh my knowledge of Mariah Carey is still pretty up to date and current. Yeah, yeah. Um so uh thoughts on the song? The song is a very good song. It is very uh, I was actually uh thinking to myself, I wonder if this song is is uh different from when I heard it as a kid. It's it's not really. Like there's not a whole lot more mm-hmm. about like, you know, the subtext or what she's talking about or not even like a whole lot of like variety and like the, the, the lyrics and the verses and what have you. It's just kind of really catchy and repeats itself. The music video is hilarious. Very nineties music video. Yeah. A bunch of dudes and like Timberlands and like flannel shirts, just like <laughs> dancing, coordinated dances in a field. Right. Uh, it's clear that they were just like, they, okay, they look so, you- cause they're dressed to look like hip and they're like, <laughs> Doing these like it just doesn't match the outfits or the looks on their like the right. hard the hard looks they're trying to give. So it's kind of the nineties for you. Yeah. <laughs> and uh by the end of it, you're just like, oh, it's clear that they just had like an hour to shoot a music video. And there's like, you know, let's do it. This is very reminiscent of, you know, not to get too far off track, but like boys to men, where they would just be like, Hey, let's go shoot in the Sahara Desert or something like that for right. water once dry. Like we're only in one location. We only have an hour. Let's just mm-hmm. shoot all the coverage that we need. Yeah, I thought this one had that uh, blind melon, no rain energy to it, where it's like <laughs> out in the <laughs> on the plains with the tall grass and just yeah. the guys kind of dancing, and it all like had that um, that water stuff uh, was like from looking from under, and and then it had these like weird lens uh, changes that they would okay. do, yeah. where I'm like, all right, that kind of has the it's kind of like grunge influenced a little bit not like i'm not like saying hardcore but some of the right. video techniques used in a lot of those and then like i was also like well looking at her attire she's wearing the flannel i'm like okay grunge is officially it's- uncool now like because it has moved from <laughs> they've appropriated they, it they, the they have just here. way too far like wait and they were doing it in like runways and stuff like corduroy jackets and stuff it was like what are you guys no what they like and I, I tell you, like, there's like there's a story about like Eddie Vedder where he like he wrote the song oh, yeah. Cor- Corduroy. Uh, it was basically because he was like looking through a catalog or something, and, and like he saw like his same corduroy jacket that he'd always worn. Like now it's like a fashion statement for like an un- like unreasonable price. He's like, this was stuff that I got from the Goodwill because I could afford it at the right. time. When I was like, he's like. This is like poor kids' clothes, and now you're like, oh, look at me, I'm styling. Like yeah. he's, he was just disgusting. They decided to dare leaked it. Yeah, yeah, it. disgusting. Yeah. So then that's how they're they're further pushed to try to try to make themselves unlikable and unpopular, yet still being able to sell re- records and concerts like galore. Like it, it's so funny how Pearl Jam tried to like commit career suicide and it just worked for them, and but, it actually worked in reverse for them. But like, but yeah, he probably threw up watching if he saw this video and saw Mariah Carey in flannel. And like frolicking around, like what happened? Like and the tied up. Yeah, exactly. Know, like, like that's it's gone too far now. But I'm not. No, they get, she looks great in this video. Yeah, that's she does. Fine. Like, I'm fine with it. But I just think of the humor of where where did the genesis of that flannel come from? Why is she? Why would she be wearing a flannel? And it's like that's because the grunge thing. And we're at 93 now, so it's been in the yeah. lexicon for about three or four years. Cobain. Cobain dies the next year, and it's like, yeah, like these poor, these guys who were like poor, living on the streets, out of cars, people, and this is what they could afford in Seattle. And he right. was like, ah, especially in Seattle, right? So yeah, right. this music video is it's mm-hmm. actually pretty plain. Yeah, uh, kind of like the the way that the verse. No go, pun but, intended, because they're hanging yeah. out in the plains. <laughs> right. Yeah, but it is a catchy song, and mm-hmm. um. It still plays on. I'm sure that it still yeah. plays on the radio today. I'm. I'm. I haven't really listened to radio today, but it, this definitely is something that I think has not even stability power, but you could probably mistake it for a song that is produced today. 
And I'm pretty sure that people will probably sample this just the way that oh, they yeah. sampled over a lot of Mariah Carey songs. Well, if you if you wanted to like pull out like what what's a stereotypical Mariah Carey song, this is probably the best example. I uh, that's a good point. It, yeah, it's got her little like like scream, like not scream, high but notes. like ah! yeah, the high yeah. notes thing. It's got be and like. It's it's got a lot of like tropes that she uses yeah. and stuff. It's, it's not catchy, quite. It's kind of playful and it's kind of like innocent and. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, very very. Uh, At least nineties does... Mariah Carey, this fits like right. The yeah, most, yeah. But like... she definitely has like a different change. I think probably in mm -hmm. the two thousands and beyond, where um, she's doing maybe a little bit more like uh, she yeah. she does like the not even dream lover, but like, this she, one she definitely has like a change of, of tone. Yeah, because like I feel like this one and like. All my always be my baby are probably in the like same wheelhouse of yes, song. Yeah. Um, but her it's I mean one of my all time favorites, all be my baby. Oh yeah, that was good. And do you remember when that dude on American Idol did it as like a grunge song? Like a yeah. Grunge song? I was like, uh, whoa, that was really was like awesome. David David Cook or something like that. Yes, yeah, like, something like that. I remember I yeah. was like ran because I watched 24 and yeah. like it always was preceded by American Idol. Like a lot of uh -huh. Fox shows I watched at the time, like House. Uh, 24 like they'd be preceded by american idol yeah. and i caught his at one time and i was like whoa it's a good cover that was yeah. like a real like because that was like he took it he made it its own he changed the idea of it and like it like became like a stalker song <laughs> i was like oh my god this is audio slave style <laughs> yeah this is cool <laughs> like uh but yeah like so that her music can speak to different genres even that's a, that's kind yeah. of a cool thing so that's it gave me more appreciation for Mariah Carey even through right. that um I think this song is also interesting cuz I was looking up the wikipedia I didn't uh I didn't know that she was lead writer on this song too Yeah she wrote which yeah it's it's great cuz you know sometimes like these pop stars yeah they, get they definitely have stuff. like yeah they get toss stuff or it's people that write things for them and you're just like mm -hmm. this is nothing that like Britney Spears would actually sing about it. It's just more like right. this older gentleman that's like, hey, sing about like this cool stuff. It's like, no, Mariah Carey actually like is the lead writer in the song. So kudos to uh to her for just being like, I want to make a, a song that's like yep. me. Yep. Yeah, and this one, yeah, this one's big. And then like Hero blows up. Hero's like huge. that's oh that was that was well, you know, it ever. comes along. Yeah, it comes along. Yeah. Yeah, that's what happens. <laughs> uh so this uh the video uh here uh to give credit where credit's due is Diane Martell which has the craziest connection in the summer of 93 at 30. Oh. She shot um, Life with Mikey, which we discussed in Life this series with, with Michael J. Fox. She was the cinematographer yeah. on that. So um, this is her second director job. Her first was Throw Your Guns by Onyx. Haven't her heard that yeah. one. So she does a lot of Mariah Carey videos, including All I Want for Christmas is You. Okay, mega uh, hit. And I discovered she's one of the most prolific music video directors uh, were in terms of working with big acts uh, on memorable tunes. That So yeah. she she's worked with Old Dirty Bastard. She okay. did uh, the video for Method Man and Mary J. Blige's All I Need. Wow. Oh, yeah. She works, with, need. she works with Red Man, Amy Grant. So it's baby, like baby. hip hop, hip hop, Amy Grant. Uh, yeah. yeah. LL Cool J. She does. Right genie in a bottle and what a girl wants by christina yeah. aguilera she works with eve exhibit she launches justin timberlake with uh, like i love you she wow. did, here's one of my favorite clay aiken's invisible if i was invisible if I, yeah if i was invisible <laughs> so yeah then she works with alicia another stalker song there you go right <laughs> she works with alicia keys avril lavigne jennifer lopez for a couple videos ricky yeah. martin beyonce n-e-r-d uh, Pussycat Dolls, Britney Spears, Pink, and Miley Cyrus. A bunch of Miley Cyrus stuff. So it's like, dang. So she's still working then. Still working. Yeah. Still doing vi vi music videos too. Like there were like some stuff credit for 2020 Has or she 2022. Done a film? Nope. No. Okay. Music video. So she like hasn't her, moved in from the F. She, Gary Gray school yet. Right. All she's done is shot life with Mikey. Like that was yeah. like that's her thing. And it happened this yeah. summer where she directs a music video for one of the biggest hits of the year. So yeah, kudos to Diane Martel. Like I, yeah, I have, good work. When I do these music video things, I have, like it's just a sound. It's just this like untapped resource of like study that is missing information. There's he, there's people that do all this great work, like directing yeah. wise and stuff that are unknown. Uh, there's like models that are in music videos and stuff. There's like 
no right. name, no credits, like like loose credits. There's directors missing from videos, and it's just fascinating to me because this Who was is like, this Max. Yeah, no. th- this was an essential like medium for like two decades to sell, yeah. or th- two or three decades to sell records. That's kind of like lost its way. Yeah, we get Lady Gaga and Taylor Swift videos, but right, yeah, it just fascinates me. That's so actually like, a really good point because you know. I don't know if you remember the box, which was this uh, TV streaming music yep. video service where you where you'd have in. to like call in, yeah, and push in like a little digit code. Yep. And if you never wanted to pay for it, you just like wait for people to call in. Exactly. Yeah, that's what I would videos. do. Yeah. Yeah. Same. Um, but even those, you would never see like. I actually, I can't remember, but I, I never. I don't think I really saw directed by you. Definitely would see the name of the mm-hmm. artist, the name of the song, the record label that they're on. Yep. But Copyright. I don't know if you'd ever see like yeah, directed by you know mm. X X Y or what have you. So the other thing that's also related to that this, might be why Hype Williams put his name on videos on, like, on the music Hype. video himself, yep, like yeah. directed by a Hype, uh, yeah, directed by Hype Williams or something. <laughs> uh, very uh, good note for all the directors out there, I guess. Yeah, but um, that sort of reminds me of uh, TV commercials. You know, yeah, like, yeah, I love TV commercials and just watching commercials in general. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, sometimes you're just like, who directed this? Because this is a well done commercial. Well, yeah, we're sitting and, here talking about this woman, Diane Martell, is like amazing like she has a she's incredible like, career yeah no one knows who she is like nothing like right. like Dimer, now i'm like oh dude what the, you i'm looking through i'm like you, you are name, like top 100 bands and groups of wait, all time when we talk about like great music video directors of all time and stuff like her, her name has to come up like yeah. i'm looking at this i'm like she's responsible she's been behind a bunch of hits and during this era some songs might not have been as big as hits without the videos. Like sometimes the videos pushed someone to get a song yeah. or some or somebody enjoyed the visual with it to help sell it. So she's right. very influential in that regard. So like and we always talk about music video directors in terms of like, oh yeah, Michael Bay used to do my music videos. David right. Fincher used to do mu- music yeah. videos. That's how we talk about them, but never the ones that just Brandon Peters used to do music videos. I used to. I used to yeah, actually used I to. almost walked into a Pussycat Dolls video shoot one time. <laughs> I was coming off the subway. Like, Sir, this is a closed set. I was coming home from work. I was coming off the subway in Hollywood. I was like walking and they were like shooting it around it they had like some stage <laughs> built and stuff and like i uh, like someone's like they were, i think we were like you want to sit in for oh, like no oh okay. they actually asked you to come in All right. like they were just looking for people to walk up and down the stairs and i just yeah. wanted to, i wanted to go home by the way this music video dream lover um let me ask you does this fit into a music video where it doesn't really make sense with the lyrics of the song yeah this happens a lot for music videos yeah yeah yeah, like, yeah yeah this is a weird music video choice Almost like Usher my way. You're like, I wouldn't have never imagined Usher at a junkyard fighting Tyrese for a girl for that. Right. Time. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, it's definitely. I mean, there's, there's when it comes to the music videos, there's the ones that like there's passion behind it. There's an idea. There's ones that fit with the song. Then there's ones that's like scripts lying around. They're like, mm-hmm. ah, give it. Yeah, give that one to Mariah Carey. She oh, doesn't oh. she doesn't want it. We'll see if Whitney does it. You know, like there's ideas, <laughs> there's concepts and ideas, like there's directors that have ideas that they want to do that they can explore through a music video. So they just need the band and the song. And if it fits, they'll do it. Yeah. Um, like yeah, like Huey Lewis in the News, doing it all for my baby is a universal monsters kind of romp where they have the band <laughs> break. She sounds pretty fun. Yeah, doing it all for <laughs> my baby. And it's Literally, the band band breaks down. They walk up to this house, or this haunted castle, mm-hmm. and then like Huey ends up becoming like he dies, and he becomes what? Frankenstein's monster and stuff. It's and they, there's like a wolf man, and like it, it's crazy. But like yeah. it, that that song, that's what it is. No, but that's that's kind of how they they would be. It's a wild right. it, like so many. I mean, there's documentaries for everything, but there needs to be one. I'm like, there needs to be. A, a documentary series on music videos that like starts in like the Beatles era where they were making videos for Ed Sullivan. So they didn't have to go play live. And so they have uh-huh. those things like and queen did some uh, in the seventies, but like, and then like do one for like the first five years of the eighties, the second five, the first, the, the nineties five, five, like it's ser- segments of five years yeah. till you get to like 2010. Then you can call it. I quits. think you've got an idea for your next series. Right yeah. There. Yeah. No, don't have the time. <laughs> Someone else could take that idea and run with it. There you go. Yeah. Would, this is a free I show. If you want to have me as a, like, uh, <laughs> I love the eighties best week ever talking head on one of them. 
Yeah, I'll do it. But gonna, that's all I ask. That's my payment. And Aaron and, and can, I will we'll think about it. <laughs> you can cut most of my my stuff as long as I show up one line with my name under it. <laughs> there you go. There you go. That that's what I'll do. So uh Abe, go. that has been Mariah Carey's dream lover. I appreciate you coming by and being a part of the of uh, summer of ninety three or three. That is a wrap for you, sir. Um so beyond this, let people know where they can keep up with you. Out now with Aaron and Abe. Check us out anywhere podcasts are found online, anywhere we get re uh, RSS fed all over the place. Check out our Instagram out now underscore podcast. Check out our Facebook out now podcast. Check out our Twitter out now underscore podcast. Check out my Twitter walrus moose hashtag Brandon you demand. Oh, hashtag Abe. No, you demand hashtag, hashtag. summer gamble champion, please. There you go. Yeah. To be Speak it. it into existence, baby. So, yes. There we go. Yeah. There. I was surprised I got second last year. I was like, oh, wow. I was, I was damn close to first again. So there you go. has there ever been a back-to-back winner? I don't think so. No. Yeah. I think gotcha. people have come close. I was close. I, I was first and then second. But I am still the global champion. That one is probably going to be held for all time. There we go. <laughs> I'm, I, and I will hold it. I will remind <laughs> everybody every year I'm still the global champion. All go. right. And that global champion is on Twitter and Instagram at Brandon for QHD written work at blue.com on Monday, Aaron Scott and I have our biggest episode in terms of the amount of movies, not the quality of the movies. As we take a look at <laughs> needful things, oh. the, the man without a face, only the strong father hood and the thing called love as the summer of 93 at 30 continues. It's a summer of 93. Thank you for listening. The Brandon Peters Show is a Creative Zombie Studios production. Produced by Brad Shoemaker and Brandon Peters. Written and edited by Brandon Peters. Announcer vocals by Jessica Olsman. Theme song by Metavari. Web design and show art by Brad Shoemaker with Brandon Peters. All music and clips featured in the episode are property of their respective studios and no infringement is intended. The Summer of and News Themes by Press Maxson. Additional information on this and other episodes at thebrandonpetershow.com. For any inquiries, press opportunities, or sponsorship, contact mail at thebrandonpetershow.com. The show is available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or anywhere podcasts are found.